Hello everyone, in this video today I'm going to show you the basics of how to set up a base station uh, for operators. Now we're just going to show you what's in the box, what the base station looks like, what it looks like when it's set up in position and what the screen is displaying when it comes to receiving satellite signals and transmitting corrections to the machine. Now the one key important thing here is um, this base station gets set up in the same point every day it stays here, it doesn't move. Um, all the complex longitudes, latitudes and elevations have already been put in. So it's just literally an operator's guide to having a look at the base station, making sure it's transmitting the signal, making sure it's receiving GPS signal and just making sure it's all working before you go to your machine. Um, there's nothing worse than going to your machine and realising that you've got to walk all the way back over uh, to make sure that the base station is turned on or even if so even if it's there. Um, so we're just going to have a quick look through the box and just to give you an idea of what to expect when you get on site. Let's have a look. Right guys, so what we have here is the Trimble base station. This is the box it comes with if you hire it or if it comes from our yard, this is how it would be displayed. Um, so what are the components we've got here? Um, in the top here, we've got the Zephyr dish. This is the bit that receives the GPS signal. Um, we've got a battery pack here, which is uh, obviously you can use a power lead if you've got power on site. If not, you can use a, a battery pack. Um, Got some other wires here which are important but not for us. Um, we've got the whip aerial which transmits the radio signal to the machine. You've got a mag mount. You've got the this bracket if it's going to be set up on a tripod and most importantly here you've got the actual base station control unit. Um, we're just going to show you how to set it up and what the basic steps are to set it up. Uh, so first of all, we're going to put the whip aerial together and then this is going to be put onto the uh, bracket. So you can see the bracket has already been installed. So I'm just going to screw the whip aerial into there and just to make sure the connections here underneath are quite tight. Next of all, I'm going to install the Zephyr dish and just screw this onto the yellow pout that's here. And then screw that in so it's nice and tight. The cable here is just ready to plug in and screw tight. Always make sure your connections are nice and tight and just keep remembering that this base station um, has been set up previously so we're just making sure that the Zephyr dish is on tight and it's not moved since the last time. The whip aerial is on and tight and both cables are nice and tight and collected, connected tightly there. So for this next stage I'm going to be setting up the controller unit. Um, for this purpose we're going to be using the battery um, because we haven't got access to power and obviously if you're out on the field and you need a, um, a battery pack this is the best way to use it. Um, make sure you charge it up every night, we have done here. So first of all I'm just going to open the flap and let the cable out. If you need to charge it at night this is the cable that you plug into the charger. Um, just getting the battery out, make sure it's all nice and not tangled. Then the next most important part is the controller unit. So you can see you've got the screen there and you've got all the connections at the back covered with little black plugs. So we'll just free them up. First connection to go in is the battery pack. Line up the red dots, plug it straight in and away you go. You'll start to see the screen um, booting up. Um, next of all, I need to be connecting the cables. This is the cables from the whip aerial and from the GPS uh, receiver there. Uh, now, remembering I said that um, the, this base station is set up every day in the same point, so all I need to do is I can remember where the cables go, but um, if you're doing it for the first time or, or with an engineer, just make sure you plug the cables in um, one by one, straight from the whip aerial to the whip port on the back for the radio antenna and then the same for the GPS 
receiver dish. Now they're screwing connections, just make sure you screw them in again, really nice and tight. Just to pull a bit of cable there, and the same with the other one. Usually you can put a bit of tape on them to mark them to say which one goes where. And then once you've done that, I usually lie down the battery and sit the and sit it there so I can see what's happening on the screen. So I'm gonna bring the camera closer. I don't know if you can see that through the camera, um, but you can see there um, SV15. I, I'm picking up 15 satellites. Um, you can see the base frequency there that I'm transmitting on, which is 458.800, um, and you can see the trans sign flashing. You can also see that the battery's charging it up there, and that's pretty much what you're looking for every time you do a start, every time you check how many satellites you're receiving. Um, the transmission frequency and the transmission flashing light and that's what you're looking for. So now we're ready to go and test out on our machine.